Right, today we're going to do a video on the M9 Protective Mask series and this isn't going to actually be on all the US versions because there was 2D M9 and the M9A1 this is actually going to be on kind of all the foreign copies done of it that I've got in my collection at least and which of them were best um, a few viewers have been saying to me could I do things, videos where I say what's this mask like versus this mask etc and I thought the M9 series would be a good one to do this on because it's one where the US didn't really use the mask past 1960. They used it for about 10 years from around 1950 to 1960-odd. Um, then obviously the M17 came into service. Uh, but lots of foreign countries bought um, the licenses to either make or um, bought M9s from America. And then what they started to do was uh, make their own versions. Some of them better, some of them worse. So let's have a look. Um, also, if I sound ill, it's because I think I've either got the flu or some sort of horrible infection. So I'm not actually sneezing that much, luckily, or coughing, but I am getting headaches and sore throats and whatever else. Okay, so here's your typical US M9. So what we're going to do is look at this in quite good detail first, so you get an idea of what the original mask's like. So, very distinctive looking mask with a big nose. This one's got a filter intake on the left side. You'll see it says US and M at the front for medium. Now, the inside of the M9 is always interesting because it's got this kind of checkered grip to rubber stuff, and that's quite nice because what that means is it seems that you get a better, um, I guess, face seal with it, you'd say, um, because that sort of grips onto your face. It's a bit like an anti-slip mat, but this doesn't have a peripheral seal if you look around the outside of the mask, which is a big problem because it means you have to get the tightness done up just right. Now, there is a chin cushion at least in there, quite a rigid one, but you know where to put your chin. Um, you can see where the Tissot tubes run through the big nose to uh, work as a Tissot system. And the actual oral nasal cup inside is black for some reason, rather than actually being the same colour as the mask. But, the M9 was a very good mask, it's an M9A1. As far as I'm aware, only the colour really changed on the M9 between the M9 and the A1 and also that they changed the carrier. I can't find any information about actual bits changing much on the mask. But, as I said, it's a very good design. 60mm filter intake on the left, apparently some were done on the right. You've got all the US serial number type things on there. And yeah, it's a good mask. It's got a fairly short XL valve cover. If you don't know how these work on the M9s, You've basically, I'm not going to rip this one off, but you've got the actual XL valve is under there, and then this is just a directional thing, so it blows the air away from your face. So, the actual M9 is fairly good. Now, the closest mask I have to an actual direct copy of the M9 is the Yugoslavian M1. And you'll see if you look at this, that inside it's got that same checkered material, which is nice, but again, no oral nasal cup. Um, it's got the same weird strap system as the M9, where, um, I don't know how to describe these straps as being weird, but they are a bit weird. It's also, you seem to have this thing where you want, they want you to button it up around your neck, because the M9 has that same strap system as well. But, the actual, um, this one's in small. Uh, lots of people think these are called the M59, because it says M59 on the side. They are actually called M1s, but I think it's like M1 slash M59, but... Again, oral nasal cup with a cheek support, very similar 60mm intake there. Now one of the things I do like with the Yugoslavian masks is that um, they are actually made from a green sort of rubber, which would work as a camouflage. Um, very similar XL valve. As I said, this is kind of a direct copy of the USM9, it's just apparently the rubber that was used in Yugoslavia doesn't always hold up that well over time. My example seems fairly good, but lots of people have posted pictures where they seem to have melted in on themselves over time. So I guess it's a chemical reaction. If something touches the rubber over time, it might degrade and keep out of sunlight. But, yeah, the Yugoslavian one is pretty much a direct copy of the American one. Right, now let's look at some of the more interesting M9 um, sort of clones where there's been improvements made. Okay, so here we have the Finnish M61 V2. Uh, you'll notice it has a slightly different exhale valve than the M9 or M9A1. From what I understand, the V1 of this mask actually has the M9A1's exhale valve, but they changed that. It's made from a different kind of rubber, seems a bit more flexible. Um, you'll notice though, my, the best improvement they made to it was that there's actually now a um, peripheral seal that runs all the way around the mask. 
So, what that means is you can get this mask to fit you better even if your head shape doesn't fit the mask. Oral nasal cup is very similar but it's made from the same colour rubber as the mask. It's got the chin stop there that works well. Um, but one of the other important uh, improvements on this one is the straps. You have a proper six point uh, head harness strap system which is elasticated like you know all the modern masks have. But the Finns had started doing this in like the 60s apparently. Which you know beats lots of modern masks or I should say lots of the other 60s and 70s masks that had the sort of elasticated straps you had to keep adjusting bits which meant you couldn't you know do the quick uh, pull and quick release on the straps. So the Finns came up with an improved version, well I'm not such a fan of this but it's technically an improved version, the M61 V3 and this is the one people find funny because you can actually see the Nokia symbol on there there. Um, so this is the one where they added a voice diaphragm here with a metal disc and then the exhale valves under there. As you can see it's literally clamped onto where the other XL valve used to be, so it's not really any better. Now to give you a quick idea of the um, actual voice diaphragm, I'll put them on. If I can get the straps right, I guess I should have loosened all the straps before putting it on, probably would have been a good idea, because it seems that some of them are slightly done up. Right. Do this, so bottom two straps tightened, mid two straps tightened, top two straps tightened, right? Hopefully you can hear me alright. I did have to re-glue this um, diaphragm in when I did the test video on it recently. The problem with these is if you take the cover off, the diaphragm falls out due to age and you can't get it back in without gluing it or put, making your own O-ring for it. Because that Finnish defence tower symbol, for some reason on my one it was upside down, a few other people complained about that. But if you get one upside down, be prepared if you unscrew it to put it on the correct way, you might break the um, voice diaphragm. But yeah, this is a very comfortable mask. Um, the rubber can feel a bit clammy at times, but at least it's a good fit and it's not really crushing my head like some masks do. So yeah, um... As said, M9 type masks are a really good design. But we've got one more to look at. Now, we're going back to Yugoslavia or Serbia for this one, but where Yugoslavia had the M1 mask, and they also had one called the MC1, which is the M1 apparently without an oral nasal cup in to make it cheaper to mass produce for civilians, they had this other mask that was quite interesting called the M2. And the logic was with the M2 that it was basically, let's make an M9, um, but let's make it in 40mm and downsize it a bit to make it more modern, which is kind of a brilliant concept because it seems nobody else thought of the idea could we just scale down our 60mm masks, but you know, apparently they were the only ones to think of it. Now, that when I think of M9s, there are also apparently um, Iraqi M9s, Egyptian M9s and Swedish M9s. I think, I think there's also Japanese and South Korean M9s, but basically yeah, M9s were sold to and used by a lot of countries, so um, bear that in mind. But as far as I'm aware, most of those countries didn't then continue to make improvements like some of the other versions I've shown, but... Here we go. The M2. Free button, or free popper, however you want to call it, bag. Quite a good bag. And here it is. The M2. So what we have with this is we have a six point head harness. Again, it's not as good as the um, finished one. You'll see we actually have a proper chin rest in there um, with the sweat hole or the moisture hole to allow it to drain out the exhale valve. Your 40 millimeter NATO intake and notice that the oral nasal cup is nowhere near as big on these. You haven't got the giant comical nose on this one anymore. You've got a much smaller nose. The reason being, I don't think they run a Tissot tube through the nose anymore on this. I'm pretty sure if I have a look on the inside, that air comes up out of a Tissot tube on the left side of the mask. Then I think, yeah, it just goes simply around um, through the nose sort of area. The idea of it being that, obviously, the air is stuck behind the nose cushion. It comes up, hits both eyes roughly evenly, and then it comes down for you to breathe. I can't actually see many valves in this, because normally when you have an assembly like this, they do put a valve in, in the nose section, like a one-way valve, but apparently the Serbians completely got around that. 
Now, again, there's a later variant of this that was made, I think it's called something like the M2F, but it's like the Finnish M61V3's XL valve voice diaphragm, but shoved on this, so then you've got that same setup in 40mm. Serbia eventually went for essentially an M40 uh, clone or licensed thing they made, but as I said, this doesn't have the quick adjust straps, which is a bit irritating, um, but, you know, you can't win them all. That's the annoying thing of a lot of respirators. I really wish somewhere somebody would just come up with a perfect design where they'd copy only the good features from every mask ever made and make something absolutely amazing. You get quite close to perfection sometimes, but you never seem to quite get there. Right, anyway, let's get this on if it's going to fit me. Right now, pull the head harness down. Right, so here we have the M9 uh, or M2 mask, and yeah, it's airtight. Um, it seems quite small around my chin, I guess that's for it to be compact, maybe it's because I've got quite a big jaw. But one of the things I would improve personally is probably have a bigger chin area. I can tighten that a bit more to get away with that, but I'd worry a bit if I yawned or something in the mask and I might break the seal there simply because it's not brilliant. The straps also don't feel like they come quite far down enough, but trying to pull them down more doesn't seem to get much results. But yeah, the this mask is really cool simply because it's, yeah, let's downsize an M9 which is kind of an easy thing to do if you've already got the license to make a mask. You might as well say, can we improve this to make it more modern without completely abandoning the idea? And here you've got an M9 that, um, yeah, is totally modernised in a sense. So uh, let me get that back off. Now, the only thing I can complain about with this, which I wish was improved, is kind of got one but not quite, is I wish it had um, a peripheral seal. Now it's kind of got one at the top, a bit like that. So, you might be able to see that easier from looking in that way. But there is a peripheral seal all around the outside, but it's not as far back as it should be to be a good peripheral seal. But it's much better than not having one, don't get me wrong. But yeah, the M2 is kind of a really interesting concept, because it's basically what happens if you say, let's, um, you know, just downsize the thing we've got to make it more modern that way. Change the filter intake rather than, um, you know, going to extreme lengths. So, as you say, you've gone some, from something like this to something like that, and obviously the smaller one is better. It's got a semi-peripheral seal, it takes 40mm NATO filters and it weighs less. Um, but again, the Finnish M61s I really like as well, because I think out of all of them they had the best peripheral seal and they're probably the most comfortable. But this thing wins on innovation of simply, let's downsize it. So hopefully you've enjoyed this versus video on the M9 series. But yeah, I think the Serbian M2 just about wins on this. Because, um, you know, it's the best. But However, had the Finns taken the V3 version of their mask and then downsized it to 40mm, I think that would have won. But still, I think this is the clear winner out of all of these.